last thing you ever want to do for your family is to make it worse for them in the event that this were to happen to you. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Prue or Prue LaRue and today I have something I'm super excited to bring to you. Um, <laughs> and it is a collab with Gimme Lip and More, uh, also known as Valerie. I'll link her channel up. And we are actually both nurses who love colourful makeup. Amazing. And we were talking, I've really been wanting to do a little bit more makeup like makeup and nursing combined content so we're going to do eye looks based off organizations that we really appreciate and we actually ended up both choosing essentially the donate life organ donation charities i think she's also doing mental health in hers so mine is going to be donate life i'm repping them right now and this is the coloring that donate life queensland has and then Donate Life Australia, their colouring is pink and teal. So I'm going to do a pink and teal eye look for you today. And we're cutting the crease. I'm going to use some concealer. So a wear test isn't really going to be that interesting. Concealer lasts ages. So I won't be back at the end. I usually do do wear tests. So I've already laid down MAC paint pot and I haven't put anything else on my face. Anyway, I'm so excited to be collabing with Valerie. She is absolutely lovely. She did the cutest video the other day, a collab with her granddaughter, and she does some really cool duping videos, and she's a nurse. So, just like, you know, <laughs> we have that in common. Anyway, I'm really excited to see what look she comes up with. Please watch hers, please watch mine. Welcome if you're from her channel. I'd absolutely love to have you a part of my little family on the YouTubes and I'm excited. This is actually going to be a bit more of a serious video once I get started. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just feeling a bit nervous right now. So thank you so much for coming over if you're from Valerie's channel and thank you so much if you're from my channel and you decide to go check her out because she is amazing. So today we are doing teal and pink based off their website colors. I'll put a little picture up here and I'm also just going to talk about some of the things about donation which I mean is not really a holiday video but it kind of is a nursing holiday video because Christmas time is one of the biggest times when car accidents happen and and trauma victims are some of the best candidates for transplants when the worst thing in, that could ever happen to a family happens, if they and they lose one of their loved ones, if they're able to donate their organs, they can give life to someone else. But it is more important to drive safe. Please drive safe. Please don't go around killing people. <laughs> I don't know how to say. Anyway, so I'm going to bring you in closer and let's get started on this eye look. So I'm going to start off and dip into my Chi Chi palette, which I haven't touched yet, which will be exciting. I'm going to go on with this color from the OMFG 2 palette. Now this may be an interesting thought for you, and it may be something that you're not really expecting, especially on a makeup channel. Like why would anyone do a makeup look based off Donate Life? And the thing is, Donate Life isn't about raising money. It's got nothing to do with it. It's about starting the conversation. And I absolutely don't want you to think I don't think this is serious, because I do. It's just that this is my way, and this is Valerie's way, of sort of showcasing our love, which is makeup, and also discussing Donate Life or organ donation for me and its importance to the world because it's something that shouldn't be a scary thing to talk about it shouldn't be something that you are scared to talk about and it should be something that you talk you, you know you should talk to your family about this so each country actually has a organ donation registry that you can sign up for and that is where you should put your preferences of what you would 
in the event that you unfortunately were to pass, what you would be willing to donate. And you can choose. You don't have to donate everything. You can donate skin. You can donate your cornea, your eye, your heart, lungs, and all that sort of stuff. It does depend on the way that you pass, what can be donated in a lot of scenarios. And whatever you do donate, you would still be able to have an open casket funeral. Because the way that they do it, you, you're not disfigured at the end. But it is really important to ask around and ask and talk to your family about these things. So it's important to put your name on the register. It's important to think about what you would be willing to donate. And then it's also important to talk to your next of kin about what your preferences are. And that is because at the end of the day, even if you've put your name down in the organ donation registry, if you haven't told your next of kin what your preferences are, they might be really hesitant and not sure if that's something that you'd really want. And they also, and they also reserve the right that they have the final choice of if your organs are donated. In Australia, nine out of 10 people will still donate your organs if you've spoken about it or your name is in the registry, which is quite a good turnout. So I'm going to the Kat Von D 10 year anniversary palette in this color. And by all means, don't feel pressured that you should donate. If you don't want to donate, that's your right as well. No one, no one should ever feel pressured to. But what I'm trying to encourage you to do is to have the discussion and to talk with your loved ones about what your preferences are. And if it is to not donate, by all means, don't donate. This is going to be a pro, a pro donation video, but I absolutely if in the event of your death you wouldn't want to donate your bo your organs, you like I absolutely respect that. I respect I respect you. But there might be someone around you who wants to donate their organs, and maybe it's worthwhile sitting down and having a chat to them because maybe you'll be in the situation, unfortunately, having that discussion one day. Also, if you're going to talk to someone about organ donation, why don't you talk to them about how they'd like to be if they were buried. If they'd like to be cremated, ashes spread, or if they'd like to be buried in the ground. A lot of people actually don't talk to their family members about what they want until they get a lot older. And you know, you might be thinking a bit more about death, but unfortunately, sometimes death just comes. It's horrible. It's Sometimes that conversation happens when you weren't ready for it. So having having a conversation now just f will free you up later on, like to have a less stressful conversation with your loved one. I'm gonna go into this green and I'm just going to put it over the top. And it's also actually really important to have a will. And so I personally, I don't own a house or anything exciting like that but I do have a will and that's because in the event that I were to pass without a will the public trustee in Australia are the ones that would have to figure out who my next of kin is and figure out the distribution of my assets which would be like my life insurance my super and my like anything in my bank account by having a will it means that my family won't have to wait that long because I think I've already marked my dad as my ex my executor of my will. So in the event that I was to die, he would be able to... In the event that I was to die, he would have access to all my assets straight away. Or as soon as possible, compared to if the public trustee had to figure out who was the right person to be in charge of those things. So no matter who you are, where you are in your life, it is worthwhile to have a will. Because in the event that you... In the event that something horrible happens to you, having that safety of mind or it just makes it easier for your family if, when you do pass, if you do pass, and hopefully you don't. By all means, I don't want you to die. No one ever wants that. But to be prepared for these things is, you know, it's helpful. But there's definitely lots of different stuff out there and there's different organ registry websites 
for everyone. But the thing is, even if you do sign up for an organ registry website, you still need to talk to your family about it. So all it does is that, all that alerting the registry does is alert the registry if you ever do come up in that unfortunate situation that you are a willing donor and that gives the fam that gives the lovely nurses at the Donate Life team for that hospital the opportunity to bring that up with you. And you can see how if you hadn't spoken to your family about your donation preferences, if they're already dealing with the thought of losing you and then to also suddenly have people come up to them and asking them if you want to donate your organs. Like how horrible that is. Sorry, I didn't realize I'd get so upset. But the last thing you ever want to do for your family is to make it worse for them in the event that this were to happen to you. Oh, I'm glad I didn't put foundation on her. So it is really important to, once you've registered with the organ donation for your state or for your country, to then tell your family. When people have those end of life discussions, it's the whole family there. It's not just one person. Unless that's what the next of kin has chosen. <laughs> Which is rare, to be honest. I'm just gonna take a minute. I'm gonna go and do my brows um, and just calm myself and I'll be back. So I have seen it in families where the family actually brought it up for their loved one. They knew that they would be interested in donating their organs and they were in that scenario and they were like, we don't think this person's gonna survive. That was horrible, but they actually brought up is like, should we be talking about donation? The relief in the nurses that have to come and talk to you about that was so much. So empowering your family to have that discussion is so important. So I thought I'd also just go through some figures. And the thing is about figures, it's so easy to lose who the person is. Because every single person on these wait lists is a person. <laughs> and their lives are all impacted by failing organs and rarely is it their own fault. So in Australia there's around 1400 who are currently waiting for a transplant. A further 11,000 are on dialysis and that is essentially a machine that cleans your kidneys and they would benefit and their kidneys have stopped working and they'd benefit from a kidney transplant. In 2017, 1,675 lives were transformed by 510 deceased people and 275 living organ donors, donors and their lives. In 2017, more than 9,600 people, Australians, benefited from eye and tissue donation. And so currently in Australia, one in three people are registered on the organ donation website. And with, so it, it, it's important. It is important. Now I did, and I have to say, this is like that morbid nurse side of me, but I did enjoy on the US website, they had their first page that I came across. And I'll link it. They had some questions. And the first question was, if I'm a registered donor, will it affect the medical care that I am provided? And the answer is no. No one ever wants you to die. Ever. We would do, we do, would do absolutely everything to prevent that happening. But in the event that your brain is, dies or you have circulatory death, there is no return from that. And we are able to, with the machines that we have today, to keep you alive even though your brain isn't functioning or you're not getting adequate blood flow to support life. Everything would absolutely be done to, survive, to, to save your life before it was considered, before donation was even considered. And the final question was, can I sell my organs? No, you can't. <laughs> that was just a good one, I just like no. So the US does have more people, so their statistics are much higher. So I'm just gonna set this in to blend it a little bit more. 
So in the US at the moment, 114,000 men, women and children are on the national transport waiting list. Thir just under 35,000 transplants were performed in 2017 and 20 people die each day waiting for a transplant. And in the US, 95% of people support organ donation, but only 54% are signed up as organ, as donors. Every 10 minutes, another person is added to the waiting list. And only three in 1,000 people die in a way that allows for organ donation. And most importantly, one donor can save eight lives. There's eight life-saving organs that you donate. Know, there's your heart, heart, two lungs, liver, pancreas, two kidneys, and your intestines. Well, they also have some weightiness. I, I'm going to get too upset reading that just because I'm, I'm a sook. <laughs> so let's move in to something a bit more. Ugh. So you can see why it's important to sign up the, to the registry for your country. Every country has one. And why it's important to talk to your family about it too. So I just used the Too Faced Born This Way concealer to cut the crease. And I'm going to crank into, I'm going to the Chi Chi part. This is actually the first time I've used this thing. And really, when you're moving into transplants and death, like, none of it is an easy choice, ever. But if you're able to talk to your family beforehand, and in the unlikely, unlikely event that you were to pass, it just, it means that they have an idea of what your wishes are, whatever they may be. So, uh, I hope that's okay. Um, it was actually a lot, I don't know, I think through my career I've seen a lot of different people who've been impacted by donation in a lot of different ways. And it really can just change someone's life completely. Oh, this pink is really nice. It's not as bright as I thought it was going to be. So I'd absolutely love to just even know your thoughts. And with Christmas coming up, it is usually when you're, when you're surrounded by your loved ones, whoever they may be, and you have the opportunity to talk to them about it. And especially if you've got parents who are getting a little bit older. And I, I did this to my boyfriend's parents the other day. <laughs> um... I'm seriously the worst. I, I, I'm like, I'm Debbie Downer. <laughs> but it's really hard not to because it's so important. And when you work in a field that you're exposed to just people passing away unexpectedly, it's hard to not want. And, you know, I know these facts. I know this stuff about like your wills and I know. And I know how important it is in that final, when in those end of life discussions for your family to have an idea of what your, what your wish is. And then also for you to be empowered in the event that unlike that your parents were to pass, that they would know what they would want. All right, just give me a minute. Oh, I don't know if that worked. Anyway, sorry, I just put the Benefit Highbrow on and I've just blended that in. So... One of the things is people get very nervous when you do bring it up. They don't really like talking about it. So I did bring it up with my boyfriend's family the other day because I'm, I'm just that kind of person. So, and I don't think we really got like real answers about what their wishes were, but I think I at least got them thinking about it, which is important. And I, I don't mind if they don't want to talk to me about it. All I want them to do is to start thinking about it for themselves and talk to each other about it we'll talk to them who they want so i'm just gonna put some glitter glue on this pink was a little like more of a dirtier pink than i was expecting which is okay but that's just sort of what happens when you put a color on that you haven't used yet and then i'm going to go on with my anastasia beverly hills in pink stuffer <laughs> and um, it's interesting because people don't want to think about it, but they also, a lot of people don't think about what's going to happen with your assets if you were to die or 
you know, because you do tend to just think, oh, my family will just instantly get access to it and it will be okay. But how does the public trustee know? Like, what if you're estranged from your family? What if they aren't your next kid? What if you have a de facto partner? What if you're married? What if you have kids? Where would you want that to all go? And so that's why it's important to talk to the people that you trust, that you think would be making those decisions in the final moments. And, you know, if, yeah, it empowers people to feel like they can act with your best interests when you can't speak. Um, I'll also link a video that I really love. Uh, so ZDog MD, he is a YouTuber, but he's a doctor. <laughs> on here and he did a really good song about is the Eminem right to live right to die right to die um I can't tell you what I really want you can only guess what it feels like and it's just for me it's a really powerful impactful song it might not have that same effect on you if you have you know but I it is more about thinking and realistically all this is is about encouraging you to have those discussions especially when you're about to be around all your loved ones and you have the opportunity to do so all right i'm just gonna go finish my face and i'll be back all right so i'll list everything i just put my face down below and then in my waterline i'm going to put till maybe from models prefer i do wish i had more of a pop and color in my crease but i think i you know i think it's kind of got the colors that they had Alright, and then just something underneath. I'm gonna go in with the dirty, this one. So I'd absolutely love to hear your thoughts on all of this. I'd absolutely love it if you went and checked out Give Me Lippin' More's channel. I absolutely appreciate it if you came over here from her channel. And I absolutely appreciate it uh, if you just listen to me sort of ramble about all those things. Uh, but let me know what you thought of everything don't feel pressured to talk about anything you don't want to um and just know i love you i adore you you're amazing i'm gonna use some of that this one cool and then i'm gonna go in i'm just gonna clean this brush off and i'm gonna pull out a different pink Oh, you know what? I should have gone into Beauty Killer. I mean, baby powder? So let's just put it underneath my crease and see what it would have looked like. Oh, so I appreciate you watching this whole thing. I hope you've, you know, I hope if anything, this encouraged you to talk to your loved ones about what your wishes are, uh, sign up for the registry in your country. I'll have it all linked below. And I just appreciate you for stopping by. Thank you so much for watching. Um, coming up, tech. And let me know what you think about this nursing content. I absolutely can do more of this. It can be, as you saw, a little intense sometimes. I'm just going to brush off. I'm going to go into China White on my inner corner. Uh, it can be a little intense for me sometimes. But I'm more than happy to have these discussions. I think they're all important. Uh, so let me know. Let me know if there's something you'd like to see me talk about or you're interested in. I've been a registered nurse for about seven, eight years now. And I've worked in healthcare for 11. I've been since I was 18. And let's do a little bit of liner. I haven't done that in a while. So I'm going to go on the... Cat one D tattoo liner. Alright, so my wings aren't even, but hey, they're in like the top wings I've ever done, I think. Alright, let's show you up close eye. Oh mascara. Shit, I always forget. In honor of Annette, <laughs> um, but I was just talking to her about doing this video uh, 
while doing this uh, benefit bad gut mini. Just because it is nerve wracking for me to do this as well and to post this up. So please let me know what you think and let me let me know what you thought of Give Me Lip and More's video, which I will link as well. And let me know if there's something else you'd like if you'd like to see more stuff like this. Uh, or if you're happy with just makeup stuff. Oh, and I'm just gonna do this because I was curious, but I just thought I do have the Lancome Gold Lash Color Top. Oh. And Annette was saying putting it on your lower lashes is fun. So you're meant to wait till the mascara dries and then you apply it. Because I put this on and I was like, well, I bought it because I was stupidly excited when it was released. And then I never used it because it's a bit stupid. Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner was just talking about putting it on your lower lashes the other day, like coloured mascara. So here we go. Oh, I'm just going to spray my face down. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for stopping by. I really hope you appreciated this video. I really appreciate you watching. I really appreciate it if you got this far. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of my little YouTube family. I love and adore each and every one of you. And thank you so much to Gimme Lip and More for collabing with me on this video. Uh, thank you. Mwah.